one of the wonderful words that you live by, I live by, that we want is wisdom. Yes, we want wisdom. I've never met anyone who said, I just love to be stupid. We all want wisdom. And today on this program with Deborah Pagay and Sarah, you're going to see strategies for wisdom in forgiving and where you draw boundaries, where you don't. I mean, this will be one of the best programs you've ever seen in your life. Why? Because it deals with where you live. It just deals with your gut, so to speak. And maybe right now you're hurting from something and you think I can't hear. Well, we'll call us for prayer because we'll pray. We'll pray quickly. We'll pray in faith and then get right back into the strategies. So thank you, Deborah, for being with us. I'm so glad you're here. And you know, something that I love, this new book that you've written called Forgive, Let Go and Live. So helpful. So helpful. But um, what, what motivated you to write it? Because I know that people are stuck in unforgiveness. I meet too many people who are stuck in their story, their history of pain. And I'm thinking, you can't think, get over it already because everybody's pain is very real and personal. It may not make sense to us, some of the things that people struggle over. Like my mom used to say when her sister was, when they, and they were both in their 80s. And she said, she used to braid my hair too tight when we were children. And I'm thinking, <laughs> really? Wow. <laughs> yeah. She Whoa. said, my sister is mean. I'm thinking, you're still thinking about that? <laughs> You see what I mean? Yeah, but but it was real on. for her. So and you know, it may not be it may not make sense to us, but it's real to them. But it's time to get over that. It's time to get rid of the ball and the chain. Right. And right. let's just go forward. Let's live. Right. And in your book, you talk about some strategies. Yes. Because our audience, and of course, you want to get the book, get three to five copies minimum, because it'll super help you and be great to give to all your friends and Bible studies, books, clubs, blah, blah, blah. But what are some strategies? Well, I'm trying to develop, well, I have developed, but briefly, but I'm going to do a workbook later, perhaps, 12 steps to uh, forgiveness, like a 12-step program. And step number one is to understand that forgiveness is not optional. You can't just say, I'll decide, maybe I will, maybe I won't. So once we get that, we understand that this is not optional. We have to forgive if we want to go forward with a quality life. We got to go forward. But then you got to understand, listen, you have been forgiven. So I give some very practical strategies in terms of like, do this, because I believe we need to do this. I, be, I believe we need to walk out our faith. Faith without works is dead. So I can believe that I have forgiven, but I need to do something because that helps me. So one of the things I ask people to do is to write down three times or three, uh, inst three instances where you were forgiven by somebody, not just by God. When has somebody extended mercy to you? When has someone extended mercy to you? Make a list. What was the situation? What happened? Now, we want to make sure that we reciprocate. But also ask, when was the last time God forgave me for something? What was it? You know, maybe you had an affair with somebody's husband. You know, Christians do that sometimes. <laughs> but did God forgive you? You know, think about that. So at, when was the last time? And then I like for people to really to humanize the offender. Look at the human side. What was going on in that person's life? Yeah. Don't just look at the act. Right. Look beyond the act and see what's going on back there. Because we know the enemy is behind everything negative. He really is. But maybe something negative happened in that person's life. You find a lot of times people who are rageaholics or whatever, or they're just mean. We don't know what kind of upbringing they brought. I remember when I was in high school, there was this girl who was a bully. But her, her mom had died when she was in the eighth grade. And I felt so bad for her because we all, you know, we, we went to the funeral and she was just inconsolable. But she was a bully to us. And I remember once she stepped on my, on my foot. And I'm thinking, you know, I think, I, I know she looks at me and I looks like I come from a perfect family. We weren't. We just, you know, we looked like it on the surface. But I'm thinking she hated that. She resented that. And sometimes you got to ask yourself, why am I behaving this way? And so well, many times we just got to humanize the offender and seek first to understand. Now that requires grace. We need God's grace to do that. Sure. We do. Sure. Yeah, I can't just decide. And, and you mentioned something earlier about this. We need God's help to forgive. It's not a matter of counting to 10 or making a New Year's resolution or grinning your teeth or being like the little engine who could. I think I can. I think I can. I think I, think I can. No, I'm going to say, Holy Spirit, empower me. Because that's what grace is all about. Divine empowerment, divine favor and empowerment. God, I need you to help me to release this. That's why I constantly say, I release this. I say it out loud because the mm -hmm. faith comes by hearing. I hear myself saying, I release this. So the other strategies that I want to talk about 
in my in my 12 step strategy is to make that list of five sins God has forgiven you for. And then I want to um, express my pain. A lot of times people will pretend they're not hurt. You know, you're just so macho. Oh, that didn't bother me. OK, it's time to get real. If something hurt you, it hurt you. I love it when Joseph tells his brothers, yeah, you meant it for bad. You meant to hurt me. You, you know, he didn't try to excuse their behavior. This is the same chapter in Genesis 50 when they came to him. He said, yes, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. So he didn't try to deny his pain. He said, yes, you meant to hurt me. I'm not going to excuse your behavior. It is what it is. You know, that's a popular saying in our culture. It is what it is. If somebody's done something to you and God didn't stop it, it is what it is. You know, how can I get the good out of it? How can I get the good out of it? So he said, you meant to hurt me. And then I want to talk about the fact that a lot of times we need to just go in and state that forgiveness. You need to say, I forgive you. I forgive you. I have a quick question on that one. Do they have to ask or do they have to say, I'm sorry for you to forgive them? No. Because <laughs> that's, I, people do that. And I've done it too. Oh, I have so too. I'm not doing it. I've done that. I've been down oh, that yeah. mental road. Been there. They didn't ask for forgiveness, so I'm not forgiving them. I don't have to and blah, blah, blah. And think about right? that. Think about that. Where, 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 do you think, where do you think the answer is to that? <laughs> It's a dead end. It's a, it's because dead end. who needs to be released from the pain? Sure. Who's carrying the ball in the chain? Sure. Who wants to let go and live? Right. You know, okay, so it's like drinking poison and hoping the other person dies. No, right. you're just going to have to say, listen, I want to disconnect from this pain. I want to disconnect from this, this emotional poison that's ruining the quality of my life. I want to disconnect from it, so I'm going to let go. If the person never asked me to, I'm going to say, I'm going to let it you go. You can forgive without them saying they're sorry. That's right. You can forgive without them saying they're sorry. And listen, you sometimes you have to lower your expectations because a lot of men won't say they're sorry. They'd rather buy you a present <laughs> or just do something good for you. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, you know, my, my brother who passed away, we had, he, he didn't forgive me because my dad had left me in charge of the will and, I, and my brother was the oldest. And, but near, I saw him soften towards me near the end of his, his life. And I thought, I know this is his way of saying, I forgive you. You know, it's kind of like Jacob and his brother. You know, when Jacob came back home and, and Esau brought him all these presents and, and Jacob says, that's okay, I don't want anything. And Esau insisted. And so Joseph, Jacob just took the present. He just said, okay, fine. Because sometimes people just rather give you something than to say, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah, I don't know right. what's so hard about saying, I'm sorry. I had a little niece who wouldn't say I was sorry. We were on a road trip. And I said, now this is what we're going to do. I got this from you, by the way. Because you say, say three times. You used to say that all the time. Yeah. Say three times. So, so I told her, I said, I want you to say ten times, I'm sorry. I should look in this mirror and say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You need to get yourself used to saying, I'm sorry. <laughs> totally. <laughs> totally. 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 And you may be watching right now, and it's a struggle for you to forgive. You may be having a difficult time. Somebody, you feel like they owe you an apology. And they may. They may absolutely owe you an apology, but it doesn't mean that you can't forgive them without them apologizing. So hop on the phone. We'd love to pray for you that God would help you to forgive regardless of their apology or not. Get on the website, leave your prayer request there, but we want to really pray that God will empower you and also give you the courage and the discipline to make that decision. I forgive. I forgive, let go, and live. And of course, grab a couple of these when you call because it'll be hugely helpful to you. And you know, I know we're going to have a break here in a little bit, and I want to kind of elude into this yes, a little, yes. but I, and we're going to cover some more here. But I do want you to talk a little bit about when you forgive, what happens to the relationship? Because, you know, sometimes we don't forgive because I don't want to go back to what it was. Or, <laughs> so you know, you're saying how do we go forward? Yeah, what do, you do with it? what do you do with it? Well, you have three options. And, right. and you can choose to uh, be reconciled, or you can redefine the relationship, or you can release the relationship. Because, see, we have this myth that uh, in order to, when we forgive, that we have to e establish everything back the way it was. That's, that's not true. Some relationships you need to just cut off. And, and be done with them. That doesn't mean you haven't forgiven the person. That just means you understand that that person is toxic, meaning capable of causing harm or danger. That person is toxic to your joy, and so you don't need to be in close relationship with them. It's kind of like cleaning your stove. I was A person was cleaning my stove once, and we used the, uh, I'm not going to name the brand, but it was a, a, a product, and I said, now listen, she said, I don't want to use that. It's too strong. It's too toxic. And I said, no, no, you're not doing it right. I used to be a maid. I know how to do this. And I said, you spray it, and you step away from it. 
because it's toxic. You don't stand there and inhale it. Some, some <laughs> of our relatives are like that. <laughs> they are toxic. Right. We don't need to always be that close to them right. inhaling their negativity because it's going to impact us. You know, sometimes we may only need to see them for Christmas and Easter and whatever. You see what I'm saying? Because a lot of times those people, will, will, they will be a hindrance to your joy. But what do we decide to do? We restore the relationship, that would be great. That would be the ideal if that person's not toxic. But sometimes you have to redefine the relationship. You have to recharacterize how you're gonna go forward. Maybe if you have a friend who's not used to keeping a secret or whatever, now you can't tell her your secrets. You know, she's a good person, but she's just, you know, she can't keep a secret. So now you deal with her according to knowledge. You don't tell her your secret stuff. You talk about the weather and the, the skiing and the snow. <laughs> you talk about something that's safe, all right? right. I think one of the best stories on redefining a relationship is found, uh, the story of Jephthah, is that J Judges 13, I believe it is, mm -hmm. the story of Jephthah 11. and how, oh, Je 11, see, I knew she knew. <laughs> you can't get it wrong on Marilyn no, Hickey's exactly. show, okay? Oh, so, I don't know about that. <laughs> yes, you can. I, can. I don't want to get it wrong. So okay. in Judges 11, um, we, we, we learned that Jephthah was the son of a harlot, but he had other brothers, and, and when they grew up, they kicked him out but he became a mighty warrior. And so when they came to him and said, listen, come help us, he said, wait a minute, didn't you hate me and cast me out? Why are you coming to me now? And they said, so you can help us. <laughs> what? But, but he redefined the relationship. Okay, that's what you're coming for? I will help you. I'm gonna go back now as the leader of the army. Mm -hmm. That was it. See, he didn't, they didn't come back to re-embrace him. He just said, fine, he wasn't bitter about it. This is what they need from me. This is what I'll give them. You know, some of you who are watching right now, you need to call us because you really have unforgiveness toward God. You feel like God failed you mm -hmm. and you need to call and get prayer. We're not gonna condemn you. We're not gonna counsel you, but we are gonna pray for you. Because sometimes we go back, God, why didn't you heal that person? Or why didn't you do this? Why didn't you keep my marriage together? Please call us for prayer. It's very important and stay there. We haven't covered all of these strategies. We've got more that you're gonna love, so stay right there. Have you ever held a grudge? Why is forgiveness so hard? People who refuse to forgive often sabotage their future and create an emotional cancer that spreads into every aspect of their lives. For your gift today of $30 or more, we will send you a revolutionary book that helps you learn to forgive. Forgive, Let Go and Live by Deborah Pagay is a must-read guide providing specific steps to help you better understand what forgiveness is and what it's not, how it's possible to forgive without forgetting, why learning how to forgive is a process, and much more. We will also send you Sarah's Start Forgiving and Start Living booklet, which will teach you how to revolutionize your whole life through becoming a proficient forgiver. And we'll also send you Marilyn and Sarah's two-CD teaching, Let It Go, that will lead you to freedom from rejection, depression, stress, and much more. It is possible to overcome seemingly unforgivable hurts. Get this valuable resource. Call or click and start forgiving today. We are so excited to invite you to come with us on our fall group trip. It is a trip of a lifetime. I'm telling you, you don't want to miss this trip. We get to go to China and Tibet and Singapore. And mom, it's not just that we're going to pop through those places. No, It's no. exciting what we get to do there. Yeah, we will do prayer walking in China. We'll do it in Tibet. Can you imagine? But also we're going to Singapore and I will be ministering in New Creation Church at Joseph Prince's Church. So it will be a glorious opportunity for you. And I wouldn't just think of myself, I would think of how many people I could get to go with me. And why not scholarship some people? When these trips are ministry times, and really it is an opportunity of a lifetime. So don't put it off, pray about it, go with us. God is gonna say yes. Go with Marilyn and Sarah. It's very, very important for you. We're so glad to have Deborah Pagay with us. And I know Deborah, mom just kind of wrapped up the last segment talking about forgiving God. And there's a whole boatload of, of issues that go with forgiving God because I've met in my own self. I've seen uh, times when I'm upset with God and it's hard to forgive because I felt like God promised something and didn't come through. Or why did, and I've heard this too, why did God let X, Y, and Z happen, you know, if God is a loving God, you know, and so forgiving God, what do we do with that? Well, first we got to understand and give God space to be God. <laughs> We're going to give him, he's going to take it anyway, even if we don't give it to him, but God is sovereign and we need, interestingly, this is ironic, we need the grace of God so we can forgive God. <laughs> 
Because, a lot, and think about it. When does God do something wrong? When does he do something wrong? You know, we need to forgive an offense. God didn't meet one of our expectations. I mean, I have a situation that I have to go back to at home where I'm trying to, you know, bless somebody with a little celebration and, and our plumbing went out and we fix it and then we figure out, find out we couldn't close the bathroom door because <laughs> it's just like we got about 24 hours to solve all of these problems. And I thought, now God, you saw we're just trying to help somebody. What's up? Why do you let the devil loose on us like that, you know? But think about it. I just say it's all working together for my good. It will keep your mindset and it keep you from letting bitterness set up against God because you don't need to be at odds with God because since you can't do anything apart from him, you're just going to have to say, God, you are sovereign. And that's where we make a mistake a lot when we are people of faith and we think if we speak to the mountain, everything we say, let, 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 we expect that should be. But God is sovereign. He knows. He sits high. He sits so high. It's like watching a parade. He sees the beginning and the end. And we're standing on the street watching the parade and all we see is the part we see, but he sees the entire thing. And so I'll say, God, you know what? You're, you're, you're seeing the whole picture because this is the, the prayer I should pray is the one that I would pray if I knew what God knew. Did you hear me say that? The prayer I should pray is the one I would pray if I knew what God knew. But since I don't know all that he knows, I'm only coming from a perspective of what I can see. We can't do that. Let me give an example here real quickly. You know, when they were killing Stephen, I think that would be very disappointing if you were a Christian. Oh my goodness, they're stoning this man. He walks in the miraculous. He's a wisdom man. But what they didn't see is that Saul, who later would become Paul, was standing there and would be totally transformed by that and would write 13 books of the New Testament. They could have said betrayed by God, but God said, hey, I got a bigger plan here yes. because that brought about, I believe, his salvation. And I think we that's why it's great to just say no matter what. And I always say this as an act of faith, say this to God in the midst of whatever the circumstance is. God, I thank you that you're sovereign and this is working for my good. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I want to be a broken record in saying that. Lord, I thank you that you're sovereign. I told my husband that the other day when things looked like they were just falling apart. I said, listen, go into worship. Begin to exalt God above mm -hmm. all that's going on. That will help you. It really will. You just it say, does. God, I thank you that you're above all this going on. You see it and you're working it out. You got to be able to say that. That's really good. And I know in your book, Forgive, Let Go and Live, you give super, super helpful insights and wisdom and practical steps really on walking this out. So obviously you need to hop on the phone, get on the website, grab a couple of these. And of course, while you're there as well, we would love to pray for you. Because the truth of it is, both of us, we've all struggled with forgiveness and forgiving God. Maybe you're disappointed with God or you've got a, an offense with God or there's bitterness in your heart with God. Hop on the phone, get on the website. We would love to pray for you um, that you would walk in forgiveness and not only uh, make the decision, but let that roll out in your life. And Deborah, one of the strategies that you talk about here is refuse to indulge in all pain masking alternatives. Well, sometimes what does that mean? Well, when we're in pain, we do things to mask the pain. We may shop, we may eat, we may even talk too much. We may do things that mask our pain instead of saying, I'm in pain, you know. It, see, it, we don't like being vulnerable because it makes us look like we're weak. So it's kind of hard to tell somebody, you really hurt me when you did that because now I've given somebody body the power to hurt me. Well, just check it out. If you're gonna ever love and care about people, they're probably gonna hurt you. Mm -hmm. in some way, intentionally or even unintentionally. You know, it's, they're going to hurt you. So you need to be able to say, that hurt me, and stop trying to mask the pain so that you can look so strong. You don't need to mask that pain. You don't need to mask it with alcohol. You don't need to do anything except say, hey, I'm in pain. God, I'm in pain. Tell the person I'm in pain. It really hurt me when you did that. You need to be able to say that. That's, that's what I mean by that. Avoid those, don't, resist those pain masking alternatives to just dealing with the pain. Okay, but let me ask this, because okay. you know my wheels are turning. Uh -huh. You can see them going click, 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 click. Yeah. So, okay, you tell the person, you really hurt me when you did X, right, Y, and Z. Right, right. Now they have, what well, you just said, they have power. Like, oh, really? I mean, do, is there a point in time where you don't tell them, but you say, I acknowledge, I'm doing these things, these bad behaviors to mask the pain, I yeah. get it. But do I have to always tell that person? You can. You if hurt. You, you, you can't. You. Uh, it's, it's healthy to do that because see, this is what it's not saying. Right. It's not saying that uh, I am now sub your slave. You say it hurt me, and this is how I'm going forward. Yes. You know, uh, maybe next time you won't put yourself in that kind of a position. Right. You see, but you know, because you know, I have this little joke I tell about don't be stupid twice. There was a man who went to the doctor, had a severe burn on his face, and the doctor said, "How did you get that?" And he said, "Well, I was ironing." And somebody called on the phone, and I picked up the iron instead of the phone. 
And the doctor said, well, how'd you get the one on this side? And he said, he called back. Aww. So you don't have to get burned. <laughs> you don't have to get burned twice. Right. And that's the point. You don't, you know, learn from it. That's one of the steps. Make a note of what you have learned from this offense, from this hurt. Make a note. What did you learn? Because listen, listen you learn something every time. You're going to learn something. So you say, you know what, if I had never learned that, I wouldn't know this. I know men who were married to women who were not faithful or whatever. They learned that now they got to be more assertive. They got to have clear boundaries. They got to express those boundaries. So that was a good thing. All things working together for good. Even David said, it's been good for me that I have been afflicted. afflicted. What does that right. mean? Troubled, exactly. hurt. Exactly. It's been good Ugh. for me. Why? That I might learn your statutes. Mm -hmm. So you'll learn a lot about God. When I went through my season of being totally rejected by my family over my daddy's will, it was the hardest phase I've ever been through in my life. I mean, before that, I was the darling of the family. I was Jesus' sister. Nice, <laughs> nice. After that, I was the devil mm. in a blue dress. <laughs> no, it was just really bad. But I just kept praying, asking God, because that's what happens when you pray. That's why you need to call in for prayer if you're stuck in unforgiveness. But you've got to really, really, really understand that prayer works. And I ask God, do whatever you need to do to bring us together. We are closer now than we've ever been in our lives because prayer works. Oh, it does. And you need to call in because a lot of you are thinking, dear God, I've got all these family issues, these issues out here. I don't know that I can take these strategies. I don't know what I can do, but prayer, let God do it in you. And we'll pray with you, not counsel you. And that's very important for you. And because God is so big, does he have something much bigger in mind? For example, Joseph forgave his brothers but the family that was saved is the family who would produce the Messiah. Oh. Could we ever see the bigness of God? And so how big does God want to be to you? And of course, when you call in, I think this is a must. I think these strategies, we're not going to have time to go through all of them, but you can have them in the book. You can get other books and pass them on. And this is an important day for you because folks, there isn't anybody watching us today that doesn't deal with unforgiveness. Come on. And all of us need to know how to set boundaries. And I think a lot of times it's just vain imagination. We think that person doesn't like me. They didn't smile when I came by, so I'm mad at them or something ridiculous. And so when we get into God's mind instead of our vain mind, then we get the mind of the Lord and how big is that? Gosh, I love it when you get the mind of the Lord because oh. God wants us to be in unity. And so a lot of times when I'm offended, I, I try to look beyond that person's actions and say, you know what, this is just an attempt for me not to be in harmony with this person, especially if it's somebody in ministry because the enemy knows if the two of you got together, mm -hmm. you're going to spell his doom. And so he will do things to make you look at each other and, and disconnect from each other. And so sometimes I'll just say, you know what, you know, it's kind of like that little ventriloquist, you know, and he's, he's you know, he's doing the dummy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, you know, it's the hand. It's the hand that's motivating. But we get so caught up in the dummy, we start talking back to the dummy. Well, listen, we got to learn to look beyond what the person is doing mm. and see the hand of God. Right. That yeah. is excellent. Yeah, yeah. excellent. And be that peacemaker. I love that. Oh. Blessed are the peacemakers, not the peacekeepers. You don't keep quiet for peace sake. Cause that causes resentment and all of that. Right. But you want to be the person who actively seeks to make the peace, the person who goes for the unity, because that's where God commands the blessing. And that's the where peacemaker the power is. are the ones who see God. That's, that's what right. Jesus they see God. Oh, they see God. attitudes. Oh, oh. They see him in every so situation. So good. So good. So good. Thanks, Deborah, we love your guts. We, love you. we think you. you're awesome. Thank you yes. so much for joining us today. And of course, grab your book, Forgive, Let Go, and Live. This resource for your life will be transformational. You totally have to have it. Pass it to all your friends. We love you. We pray for you. We know that God has hope and a future for you beyond your wildest dreams. Have you ever held a grudge? Why is forgiveness so hard? People who refuse to forgive often sabotage their future and create an emotional cancer that spreads into every aspect of their lives. For your gift today of $30 or more, we will send you a revolutionary book that helps you learn to forgive. Forgive, Let Go, and Live by Deborah Pagay is a must-read guide providing specific steps to help you better understand what forgiveness is and what it's not, how it's possible to forgive without forgetting, why learning how to forgive is a process. 
and much more. We will also send you Sarah's Start Forgiving and Start Living booklet, which will teach you how to revolutionize your whole life through becoming a proficient forgiver. And we'll also send you Marilyn and Sarah's two CD teaching, Let It Go, that will lead you to freedom from rejection, depression, stress, and much more. It is possible to overcome seemingly unforgivable hurts. Get this valuable resource. Call or click and start forgiving today. Phnom Penh, Cambodia, has an extremely prominent sex industry. Sex workers have few options for their babies while they work at night. Most babies are left alone in dangerous and devastating conditions. Night care, the first of its kind, is a safe haven for these babies. Here is where babies are happy, protected, fed, and cared for nightly. Will you help the least of these? Night Care from Saving Moses. We are so happy to have the opportunity to get to minister on forgiveness and have Deborah Pagay with us to minister on forgiveness because everybody needs it. Everybody needs it. <laughs> Desperately. I mean, we need it from all the way as our kids, with our parents, with our siblings, with our friends, spouses. with spouses, <laughs> yeah, your mates, your co-workers, yeah. people from school, your teachers. I mean, the list is unending, right? It is. Right. So I want to ask you, would you please pray for our audience? Pray yes. for me in this prayer as well, that God would help us to live in forgiveness, forgive, let go, and live. Yes, and before I pray, I just want to say that God, we just really appreciate the fact that God works in us to will and to do of His good pleasure. Mm -hmm. So Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that your mercies are new every morning. We thank you, God, that you give us the power, the desire to forgive, to release others. And so Father, right now we say we release every person who has ever offended us. We will be a channel of your mercy as we pray for them and bless them and do good towards them. We know God that when we do this, we're doing it your way and we'll get your results. And so we thank you, Father. We thank you, God, and we say by faith that we are free. We're no longer bound and stuck in unforgiveness, but we walk in freedom and we model it. And we thank you that it all comes from you. And so, Father, today we just say again, we release everybody in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And we do. We release everyone. You know, and it's such a free feeling, you know, that you're you, re you let it go. Okay. Yeah, they hurt you, they wounded you, who knows what all they did, but you let it go. And what did happen when you let it go? You let God come into it. And you let Him make it work for good in your life. And it just releases you. You are released in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm.